Welcome to the town hall meeting, an informative discussion for parents and community members regarding the dangers of social hosting. I am Lieutenant Ed Hayes from the Will County Sheriff's Department. We have just started a coalition targeting the prevention of youth using alcohol and marijuana. Before we get started with the meeting, there's a few logistics. The bathrooms are out this door to the right and also on the left side out here. No food or beverage, please, in the sanctuary. Also at the conclusion, question and answers part of the presentation will be available. There will also be people located throughout the sanctuary wearing stop underage drinking ask me buttons. Please feel free to talk to them about anything in the presentation tonight. Now I would like to introduce SUNY Leo from Chestnut Health Services. SUNY. Good evening. I am pleased to be here on behalf of tonight's sponsors, the Hispanic Latino Coalition of Will County and the Lockport Homer Coalition for Substance Abuse Prevention. Underage drinking is a much overlooked issue. There is this increasing norm that says it's okay to serve young people alcohol as long as it's in the home and supervised. It makes it safe. Well, the data tells us otherwise. I have some data here that I'd like to share with you. Alcohol is the most widely used substance by teenagers in Illinois. 63% of Illinois 12th graders consumed alcohol in the past year. 44% of Illinois 12th graders consumed alcohol in the past 30 days. 73 of the Illinois 12th graders consumed alcohol or say it's easy to obtain alcohol. There are consequences to these actions. Youth who initiate drinking at a young age are more likely to have drinking issues as adults. Youth who drink at a greater are at a greater risk for fatal car crashes, sexual assault, physical assault, academic failure, and unintended injuries. Youth who drink are more likely to engage in risky sexual behavior and begin to use illicit drugs. As community organizers working to prevent underage drinking, Chestnut Prevention staff are currently serving grassroots coalitions in three counties, Will, Grundy, and Kendall. These organizations, and those of you out there, Recognize the importance of addressing underage drinking, so we thank you. I would now like to introduce my coworker, Cherry Powell from Chestnut Health Systems. Thank you, Sue. I'm currently the project coordinator for the Lockport Homer Coalition for Substance Abuse Prevention, and like three of the other coalitions served by Chestnut staff, we are in the midst of an exciting and visible approach to reducing underage drinking. A parent communication campaign is what we have started. The purpose of the campaign is to address two contributing factors reported on the Illinois Youth Survey, which we fondly call, um, we call it the IYS. There were two contributing factors that came out of there that prompted us to uh, do this total coalition. One, first it was that the kids say that they usually get their own beer, wine, liquor from their parents and with their parents' permission. And then there was a second contributing factor, and that one was the youth said that they didn't think that it was wrong at all for people their age to drink. Well, therefore, our campaign encourages parents not to provide alcohol to children, not to provide alcohol to their children. The campaign slogan that we started that came out of all of this from focus groups was, be their guide. Don't provide. Parents, that's what we're asking you. Be their guide. Don't provide. Materials from our campaign can be viewed at the chestnut resource table outside in the cafe of this beautiful sanctuary, which is 
my church, which is the First Assembly of God, and my pastor is seated in the back somewhere, Pastor James Arnold and his uh, beautiful wife, Debbie Arnold. I also would like to mention in that there, we have an exhibit outside, which is called In Plain Sight, which is a display that is available for your viewing outside, outside of this church. It is a mock bedroom which displays the many ways young people conceal their use of drugs and alcohol. Hmm. This was made available by the Grundy County Sheriff's Office and the Grundy County No, Task, no Tolerance Task Force, which is coordinated by our dear friend Paula Goodwin. I would also like to acknowledge some people that were not able to make it here tonight, but definitely send their regards because they support us. And they are the Will County Executive Mary Walsh, Senator Pat McGuire, Senator Jennifer Bertino Tarrant, Representative Natalie Manley, and Congressman Bill Foster. Now, let me introduce you to uh, some of our experts that will really tell you what this social hosting is all about. Um, the first person that I'm just going to name them all and then they'll come one at a time. The first person that you will hear from is our Will County State's Attorney, James Glasswell. The next person is Jolie Police Officer, Officer Ed Johnson. Next, we will have a uh, representative of the Will County Health Department, Armando Reyes. And uh, next, we will have an outpatient service um, counselor from, the, from our Chestnut Health Systems, Matt Gosner. Thank you so much, and please remember this slogan if you don't remember anything else. Be their guide, don't provide. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. The social hosting in Illinois, <laughs> the law that was enacted by the legislature, is a very common sense law, and its uh, tentacles are, are very, very broad. Uh, if you have alcohol in your house, under the law, you're responsible for it. And there's zero, zero tolerance for the delivery of alcohol to minors. But you don't have to actually deliver it. If you have it, open so that the child has access to it, you're responsible. And whether you're home or whether you're not home. And so it's basically almost an absolute liability. So if you've got alcohol, you have to make it so it's in a controlled setting. Uh, again, the average person probably has a refrigerator in the garage uh, with alcohol in it. And in most cases, that works out okay. But if your child has friends over, and they can simply open that, that refrigerator and take out a beer, you've got a problem. Uh, it's a Class A misdemeanor in Illinois to provide alcohol to minors, anyone under 21 years of age. Uh, additionally, if you have a party and uh, you think that you're doing your children a favor by having them in the basement so that you can watch them, you're in clear violation of the law. They're both civil and criminal penalties. Class A misdemeanor is punishable by up to 364 days in jail, and a minimum $500 fine, maximum $10,000 fine. And if there's an injury that's occur that occurs because of the alcohol used by the minors, you could have uh, be looking at a Class 4 felony if there's great bodily harm or death caused by that. So it's a very dangerous, uh, slippery slope for parents. You've got to be very regimented. Make sure you warn your children about the dangers of alcohol. And alcohol is a gateway. It's, it's one of the, probably the most prominent gateway drugs. We always talk about marijuana being that. But when children are intoxicated, their rational thought processes have come undone. And they do things that they wouldn't do if that wasn't the case. And we were talking before we started this program tonight about heroin. Heroin is an epidemic like we've never seen. Uh, prior to 2009, we were seeing fatal overdoses in the single digits. And suddenly, it spiked to 29 in 2009. Um, we hit a high of 53 in 2012, and then we, we kind of drove it back to 38 the next year, 35 the next year. But last year, we spiked back up to 53. Uh, we've done a lot of things with regards to uh, 
getting information out to the public. We've done seminars at the schools. But in 2011, we had our first summit in Homer Glen. And it was kind of kind of an eerie thing. We were on one of those portable stages and it was rocking it in the wind. But it brought our, our county together like we've never seen. And Larry Walsh promised that day to have the, the health department develop a program and that resulted in the HELPS organization. And we have a private organization called HERO, the HERO and Epidemic Relief Organization. And there's no county that has two entities like that working tirelessly on a daily basis to, to fight this epidemic. We've also got the Narcan now being readily distributed to all law enforcement agencies. Um, it's a nasal application that can revive an individual who's uh, experiencing an overdose of heroin until they can be gotten to the hospital and revived. But it can't be depended on or relied upon because the intensity of the heroin that's available on the street today is five to ten times more potent than it was in the old days. And kids today are smoking and snorting the drug and also injecting. But on the party scene, you know, kids are. They say you're not an addict if you're smoking or snorting, you're just partying. Uh, you're only an addict if you inject. Well, that's not the case. If you use it one time, you can become an addict. And, and repeated uses, you absolutely are addicted. Heroin is the most addictive opiate uh, on the planet. And doctors are, are not allowed to prescribe it as a pain medication for that reason. But there are other, uh, hydrocodone, oxycontin, these drugs are the gateway to heroin. And if you leave them in your medicine cabinet for your children to have access to, we've seen countless tragedies occur because they get addicted on, on those pills. They obviously can't go to, to the pharmacy and get more, but heroin is readily available. The city of Chicago, um, you can get 13 jabs for $100. And that's, that's a fraction of what it would cost for an oxycontin or hydrocodone prescription. But we've done a tremendous job here. The, the law enforcement officers on the street here, uh, we've quadrupled the number of drug dealers going to the heroin dealers going to prison, but they continue to, to reappear. And even when we had, uh, we went from 54 uh, in 2012 going to prison there are only 14 the next year because basically they were most of them were locked up. The kids just hit the heroin highway and went to Chicago and their supply was not interrupted. And that's a tragedy. I had a social worker come up to me at one of our conferences, the Hero Helps conferences, and, and told me that she grew up in Chicago. And if I'd like to, I could get in her car. She'd take me to four gas stations where we could buy as much heroin as we want. That's, that's staggering. Um, and, and that's beyond our jurisdiction. So the jurisdiction has to be in the home, and you have to safeguard and watch your children, learn about the signs that would indicate that a child's on heroin, and they're, they're blatantly obvious. So you, you have to be asleep at the wheel not to know that your child is, is using heroin. Uh, and, and the end is never good. Uh, again, you talk about the rational thought processes coming on done. Heroin is the number one. Uh, you, you can talk to your children all you want once they're addicted and it's not going to do any good. They're going to need intensive treatment. And thankfully we have a drug court here that I was able to get going in 2000 and we've had about a 95% success rate with relapses on drugs. And a number of the heroin addicts at graduation have told us that the drug court saved their lives. There's intensive, uh, first there's incarceration, then intensive inpatient treatment, then we wean them off through a uh, halfway house. Um, if they've never been convicted of a felony, their felony charge is dismissed and they can start anew. Uh, I had a young lady that graduated in 2000, go to college and law school, and I hired her as a prosecutor in the office that prosecuted her. That's the ultimate vindication of, of the success of the court. The sad thing is, you can't get into drug court unless you get arrested. So there's so many young people out there that are addicted, they're having problems, and we can't give them the services of our drug court, which is probably the state of the art available today. Uh, it's a real tragedy, but again, we're working hard to find new resources. The key is to stop a child from ever using it in the first place. So that's our goal. Uh, we have a, a conference coming up April 29th at the Edward uh, Hospital facility in Romeoville. It's right on Route 53. It's a beautiful facility. There'll be plenty of presenters, and, and there'll be booths set up with uh, 
providers. You should try to make it. It's 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 open to the public, and you can really learn a lot. Uh, it could potentially save your child's life. So alcohol, heroin, stay away. And uh, you, we got more presenters here today, but these these two things are a scourge on our society right now. So pay attention at home, and hopefully we can beat this. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Glasgow. My name is Ed Johnson, police officer with the city of Joliet. I'm the crime prevention officer for the city. Um, in talking about social hosting, I think one of the things we have to look at is to see where and, and how we get to that, that location that we're, we're having those issues. A lot of people address youth and alcohol as that is a problem, and it is in our society. But when we start talking about social hosting, it becomes an adult problem because those are the ones that are providing or allowing the alcohol consumption to be done in their home. Um, one of the things that, that we've seen with social hosting is the fact that parents a lot of times want to be friends with their kids. And, and they believe that that's a, a way for them to get information from their kids, have a good connection with their kids in regards to what's going on in their life. And I, I understand that concept. However, you have to be a parent first. And a lot of people, I think, have lost sight of that, that concept. It, it's about being a parent first to your child before you're going to be their friend. Um, in the social hosting parties that we've seen in the past, a lot of people feel, hey, you know what, as long as they're drinking here, they're drinking in, under my roof, I'm aware of what's going on. And for that reason, it, I can make sure that they're safe and sound. As their friends coming over, same thing. I can make sure that they're safe and sound. People have used the technique of, oh, I take everybody's car keys when they come, so they can't leave. Well, let's face it, our youth are, are very um, uh, gifted individuals in regards to being able to come up with concepts and ideas, so I'm sure an extra set of car keys is not something that's, you know, uh, something they don't necessarily have in their pocket when they show up at your, at your residence. The one thing that we have to understand is the excuses that parents have for it. You know, and I've heard time and time again from parents, well, you know, back in my day, you know, we took a beer from dad's refrigerator, so on and so forth. This is a different day and age with the kids that we have nowadays. Um, and the dangers are, are more prevalent. And the reason I'm saying that is because when you start talking about not only the use of alcohol, but as you just heard our state's attorney talk about, the use of other drugs, including heroin, which we'll, we'll talk about here momentarily, um, there's a lot more out there for kids to get involved in, and things one thing lead to another. Alcohol by itself, with individuals getting intoxicated, nowadays we're seeing things brought in and mixed with alcohol. Things like energy drinks that never existed back when somebody like my age was a child, those energy drinks didn't exist. What people don't realize is if you mix energy drinks with alcohol, it completely overrides your body's system telling you to stop drinking. Under normal circumstances, an individual overindulges and gets intoxicated, they get sick, they pass out, and that's their body's mechanism for telling them, hey, you've had enough to drink, we need to shut down at this point in time. The problem is, is that if you're dealing with energy drinks or certain prescription medication, it negates all that in regards to your body being able to read those signs and shut itself down. So we're seeing higher incidence of alcohol poisoning. We're seeing higher incidence of traffic accidents involving intoxicated in individuals that are our kids. Um, so those are some of the things that, that we have to look at. Um, you know, in 2004, when this first came about, they were, they were pushing this law to try and force parents' hands to say, hey, we have to take a step back here and protect our children. There's been several cases that have gone through uh, the state of Illinois uh, several years ago. They, they pushed this law full force on a family who had a social hosting party uh, in northern Illinois. The individuals left. There was a fatality involved because individuals got out of the house afterwards. Uh, the parents were imprisoned. They lost their home, their car, their bank accounts, so on and so forth. So there's a lot at stake and a lot on the line for allowing social hosting to happen within your residence. And it's not just you sitting there providing alcohol or having drinks with them. It's a matter of you not securing that alcohol within your home in a reasonable manner that would allow access to an individual 
without your knowledge while you're home or even when you're away from your home. So those are the kinds of things that we have to kind of look at and, and protect ourselves against. Um, when we started talking about moving into to harder drugs, and one of the things I'm, I'm going to leave you with, um, just as recently as today, somebody forwarded me an article in reference to a individuals hosting a party. And in Ohio, there is a mother and a grandmother in custody at this point in time for the death of a 16-year-old son and grandson who this child was to them for a heroin overdose. They were having a party at a hotel room with their grandchild and their child in reference to utilizing heroin with friends, and that, in, that child lost his life. So that, that social hosting is not just always about alcohol. It's also about other drugs, be it marijuana, you know, or heroin use, whatever the case might be. One of the things that's becoming more and more popular with our, our teenagers nowadays is the, the parties where everybody's showing up and they're cleaning out mom and dad's or grandma and grandpa's medicine cabinets. And they're putting all this medication into a bowl and just taking it at random, not knowing how those drugs are going to react with each other, um, how they're going to react, obviously, with alcohol. I mean, how many different medications do you sweep inside the bottle and it says right on there, do not take with alcohol? So those are the kinds of things that are progressing in our society today with our kids that we really are trying to get the word out to our parents to let them know, hey, there's a reason that you can't just be your, your kid's best friend. You have to be their parent. You know, I, I believe a lot of the kids, and I, I work with a lot of youth, I, I believe a lot of kids want parents to give them guidelines and to give them barriers because it's showing them that they actually have somebody that cares about them in their life. So to parents, I stress to you, definitely step up. Let kids know that you're not going to tolerate these type of, of situations in your, in your home. Be aware of their surroundings because if they're leaving your home and going someplace else, how many parents know the actual families where their kids are hanging out at? Are they picking up the phone and talking to the parents? Hey, is somebody going to be home? Is, is there going to be somebody around? Is there going to be alcohol served? Those types of things need to be addressed um, you know, from a parent's standpoint. So again, those are some of the things we want you to be aware of, some of the things that um, we are seeing that are becoming prevalent with our youth, and in order to protect them, it's going to take everybody to be involved with it. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Armando Ray, I'm with the Wood County Health Department. Uh, I've been in the field of substance abuse uh, prevention and drug treatment and uh, mental health for over 30 years. And uh, I'm just going to piggyback what everything's been said. It's really, really great. And I'm just going to just uh, fill in a few little things that um, I just want to mention. Um, what we've been talking about is a gateway to drugs. And these parties, they're having these social parties, these social hosting, whatever you want to call them. What's happening today is that parents think that alcohol is the only thing involved. And that is not so true. There is so much more involved. Alcohol is just the beginning. And we used to, back in the day, which I love to say back in the day, is that we used to say that marijuana, you know, is a gateway drug. That is not true anymore. That's what, um, that's what um, State Attorney Glasgow was saying, that that's, a get, that's not a gateway anymore. And that's true. It's not. What's a gateway, basically, these days is it starts all the way from tobacco, cigarettes, e-cigarettes, and also the energy drinks. I'm glad the officer brought that up because that's what's happening today. Um, we got nine, ten. 9, 10, 11 year olds doing energy drinks. I would never let my child have an energy drink. He's 12 years old to this day. You know, that is very high potency um, amphetamine, basically caffeine and those energy drinks. So those are the gateway drugs today um, that we have today. And what those lead to eventually can lead to um, alcohol, then marijuana, and then other hardcore drugs. So the gateway is no more marijuana. You can, these days, you, you want to get a job at a retail store, or even McDonald's, what are they going to do? They're going to test you. Okay, so a 16-year-old who wants a job at McDonald's basically has to be tested, and they're going to come out. Um, they're going to come out positive for marijuana. They're not going to get the job. And what parents, so many times, parents have told us, especially our therapists, like it's only marijuana. And I cringe with that when they tell me it's just marijuana because marijuana is not like they used to be. Marijuana is high grade now, and there's different strains of marijuana. We got a cannabis sativa, cannabis Indian, and then we got a, uh, cannabis Kush. And especially the cannabis Kush that comes from Afghanistan, it's very powerful, very expensive, but somehow or another, they still get a hold of it. Those, tr those strains of marijuana are powerful. It's not the same marijuana back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, even 90s anymore. And, and the sad thing about these drugs also, like we were talking earlier, is that they're laced. 
relates with something, relates them with PCP, phenocytidine, or even embalming fluid. So whatever they can think of, they're gonna lace them so they can actually make more money that way and you get that kick out of these drugs. So that's why when people say that marijuana is the gateway, it's not, and these social postings or parties their parents are approving, they think it's just because they wanna keep my child safe, I know what they're doing, they're gonna stay downstairs and I can observe, it's not true anymore. And especially where I work, that any of our therapists ever find out or parents mention that, we call uh, the Department of Child and Family Services and we call the police right off the bat. That's what we do. Um, it's a zero tolerance, you know. But that's neglect, it's abuse. When you're letting your child use um, any kind of alcohol, um, even though it's a provision, it's illegal. And, and the, the laws are very strict now in regards to parents that them do this. Um, the biggest, also another gateway drug that we're seeing right now, it's um, the prescription drugs. Basically like Adderall, Ritalin, and new psychostimulants. That's what we're finding out, especially children um, at a night, you know, start off very early, or even in high school when they go to uh, um, college. Those drugs are basically can lead on to other drugs now. We're finding that out. Um, the other trending drug that's out there, now we used to, it used to be painkillers. Right now, number one that we're seeing a problem with are your benzodiazepines. Those are your Xanax, Clonopin, and your um, volume's still around. <laughs> I've been around for a long time. And those are the prescriptions that are really that these teenagers really get a hold of. So again, those parties, we think alcohol is just being passed around. That's not true. These pill parties that I was, sir was talking about um, basically exist. They're very private, but they actually happen. And they have these fish bowls, they throw these pills on it, and can you imagine the pill, that, you know, you're grabbing out of it and you don't know what you're getting, okay? So it can, um, it can be very lethal and you can end up in overdose. So those are the things that are happening. Also, another thing that's died down a little bit, but still going on, um, especially, you know, I was working in Chicago a few years ago. It's in the suburbs, still we have um, the whipping parties. And we're basically whipping parties, basically whipped cream or like um, cheese with basically the gas out of the, out of the actual bottles. You can actually vent it, and you can actually huff, what we call huffing, you can actually start the gas out of there and get high. And that's very lethal, it can cause brain damage or death right off the bat. So there are the little things that they're still doing out there, but a lot of um, what happens in the last panel I did about two months ago, one of the biggest things talking to the parents is the denial. I don't like using that word, denial, but honestly, it's when we turn that, you know, we turn our head and we don't want to say, we want to say, it's not my child. Never, never my child would do that. I always supervise them, I know what they're doing. And that's what we were talking about, and then I was talking about like just being aware, looking at the texting, you know, the little things like that, where they're going, who you with, you know, what's going on today. You know, those little things make a difference. But it's the parents that are too busy, they're working of course, and they're trying to make ends meet, and they're not paying attention to their children, and that's all the things that happen. Um, alcohol is, um, we're talking about what the death, you know, the number one step. Still, cigarettes are the number one, but alcohol is right behind it. You know, the other day I teach at Allen University as an actual professor, and even in the textbook, it tells you by that. Number one stressor in life, stress reliever in life, is alcohol still. But it still is. And of course, you know, when they drink at their young age, they feel good. That's what it's supposed to do. You know, that's, but not understanding like the lethal end of it and where it's going to end up. But that's what alcohol is an inhibitor, and that's what they're gonna do dumb things. That's what alcohol does. Adults do dumb things when they drink too much. So can you imagine that lesson and that experience if I drink alcohol? And um, and then comes marijuana, so number three. So those are the top three still out there. You know, um, they haven't gone away. I hear people will say that you know, it's, you know, they come back, they go, and they come back and they go. They've they been here. Um, the other one, the yeah, Assistant Attorney Glasgow talked about, heroin is one basically that scares me the most. You know, heroin, working in Chicago, working back in Joliet, you know, it's true. That one time they use it, you know, rarely hear somebody tell me, um, oh, I did it once, rarely, and I, you know, I, I kicked it and I was okay. Rarely. Heroin is amazing in a negative way. It's that one time, whether regardless if you shoot it up, you inject it, you inhale it, I mean, you yeah, inhale or smoke it, it doesn't matter. Eventually, it's still lethal. And the very first time you can actually basically get addicted and get hooked. So, um, that one is, I think, still with parents with education that, um, that you get suspicious of anything that you see in the house or you find in their clothes or wherever because that one's passed around um, in parties. If they try it, it's not, it's not true what they're saying, it's only a myth, and that's not true. It's very, very lethal. So, I think with that, um, I'll just leave you with those, you know, because those are the main um, drugs that we deal with all the time and what we call gateway drugs. So, again, you know, um, marijuana, like you keep hearing the gateway drug, that's not true. It's alcohol and 
e-cigarettes, the tobacco, and you know, any drinks are your gateway drinks. Okay, thank you. Hi, so <clears throat> my name is Matt Gosner. Uh, I'm one of the youth outpatient counselors with Chestnut Health Systems. I do treatment for adolescents in the Joliet area. Um, currently, we're partnering with Joliet Township uh, High Schools for Central and West. So two days a week, I'm there uh, working with clients. And got quite a, quite, quite a case out there, actually. Uh, we have an intern who's working at Bolingbrook, Romeoville, and Matea Valley, I think is how it's pronounced. But what I want to talk to you guys about today, going with the theme of social hosting, is the idea that it's not just kids that are doing it, it's parents as well, as we've heard. And going along with that as well, what was previously mentioned about denial. You know, we like to think of ourselves, it's not our kids, or, you know, it's not that bad because it's not, you know, I'm not doing crack or heroin or something like that. It's just drinking. Well, it's got to start somewhere. And that's something that a lot of people will lose sight of. And denial is not something that just affects the kids I work with. I work with a lot of them and quite a bit. <laughs> so. It's something that parents have to, and we lose sight of that. And the idea where we blame, you know, it, it wasn't my kid, somebody else's kid brought it to the party. Well, yeah, it's really easy to believe that when we keep saying it over and over again. We also rationalize it and we think to ourselves, well, you know, I did that when I was younger, and so it's got to be okay. These are all warning signs and they're things that really don't help people with, you know, come to terms with it. <clears throat> so, going with that, I don't want to take up too long. Um, I do work with Chestnut, like I said. Uh, I'd like to turn it back over to fellow employee, Sherry Powell. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. I'd like to say thank you to all of our speakers. They were awesome. And I know that they've given you a lot of information is probably overwhelming, but uh, it's so essential to life, life for your entire family, especially our youth. So please, please take heed to what you've heard. And if you have any questions about anything, you can contact our office, which is Chestnut Health Systems. Uh, we're located at 370 Hoboldt. Road in Joliet. Uh, please feel free to call us at your convenience because we we do want to help. And uh, I'd like to thank all the people that came out tonight to support us, um, the Will County Health Department as well as the Sheriff's Department. Um, have Bonnie uh, McPhillips here, and I thank her so much for being a part of our coalition. And uh, we have a teacher from Bolingbrook High School here. Thank you for knowing so how much important this is. So, uh, and Paula Goodwin with the uh, implant site, which was awesome. It's, it's, it's totally mind-boggling to see how kids are hiding alcohol, I mean, alcohol even, and pills and huffing out of a ball. Unbelievable. I was just blown away with that. But uh, in Channel 6, um, Miss Julia Alexander being so gracious to videotape. And we have Bob Covey up there doing all of the lights and sound system for us. So thanks again so much, all of you people that came out. And um, feel free to call us. Thank you. Welcome to the Town Hall meeting, an informative discussion for parents and community members regarding the dangers of social hosting. I am Lieutenant Ed Hayes from the Will County Sheriff's Department. We have just started a coalition targeting the prevention of youth using alcohol and marijuana. Before we get started with the meeting, there's a few logistics. The bathrooms are out this door to the right and also on the left side out here. No food or beverage, please, in the sanctuary. Also at the conclusion 
question and answers part of the presentation will be available. There will also be people located throughout the sanctuary wearing stop underage drinking ask me buttons. Please feel free to talk to them about anything in the presentation tonight. Now I'd like to introduce Suni Leo from Chestnut Health Services. Suni. Good evening. I am pleased to be here on behalf of tonight's sponsors, the Hispanic Latino Coalition of Will County and the Lockport Homer Coalition for Substance Abuse Prevention. Underage drinking is a much overlooked issue. There is this increasing norm that says it's okay to serve young people alcohol as long as it's in the home and supervised. It makes it safe. Well, the data tells us otherwise. I have some data here that I'd like to share with you. Alcohol is the most widely used substance by teenagers in Illinois. 63% of Illinois 12th graders consumed alcohol in the past year. 44% of Illinois 12th graders consumed alcohol in the past 30 days. 73 of the Illinois 12th graders consumed alcohol or say it's easy to obtain alcohol. There are consequences to these actions. Youth who initiate drinking at a young age are more likely to have drinking issues as adults. Youth who drink at a greater are at a greater risk for fatal car crashes, sexual assault, physical assault, academic failure, and unintended injuries. 